Hello guys, welcome to another video of Tax Riders. In this video, we want to go back to Salumi and see how to create multi-material mesh in it. Let's go for it. So by multi-material mesh, I mean something like this. This is a single mesh, but we have two regions in it, actually two parts of the mesh that are labeled with two different uh, numbers or labels. So in this case, we have the green part labeled as medium and the orange part labeled as a scaffold. And in the finite element simulation that you use in any finite element simulation working on like Eulerian basis, you can assign a different material properties to these two regions. For example, in Freeform or Phoenix, you can read the mesh and assign two different diffusion coefficient on reaction rate to, you know, part of or even stiffness in elasticity to these two parts. And this is really different from Lagrangian mesh in which you have two materials in contact of each other. This is an Eulerian mesh so we have a single mesh and everything, you know, these are just visualization of different regions of the mesh. So this is a single mesh, but with two different regions. Another example of such a mesh can be something like this. So again, we have scaffold and the medium. And as you can see, we can have also control on the interface. So the interface is respected in the measure. In this case, the Salumi measure, NetGen to refine the interface on, you know, on the regions that, act, that is actually the interface of these two zones. And this is another example that is a 3D screw inside a cylindrical container. So as you can see in the first one, first example, the mesh is just refined on the interface, but it's coarse, you know, on other parts, the parts far from the interface. It can be either on the container, on the green part, or inside the interior part, in this case, that is labeled as a scaffold. So we have like only one meshing criterion applied to the interface of the interior part. So let's do that together in Salome. It can be really fun to make. So I, the first step is to run Salome. I run it. And here, for the sake of simplicity, I will just embed one uh, box. Oh, sorry, I should go to geometry. I will embed uh, one box inside another box. But a geometry can be really complicated. It doesn't matter. So I make a box here. You know, we have used Salumi several times in Tox Riders. And as a result, I don't need to uh, elaborate on, on the user interface things, I think. So uh, I made a box. I can also name it like container for you know easier reference. And then another one. Uh, this time it is one one one. So one eight of the original box that I created, and I can name it as part. So you can see the part is here, and the container is there. And now I need to move the interior part to the middle of the other one. Uh, so I need to translate. So I perform a translation on this object and I know uh, how much I need to move it. I think I need 0.5. Yes, it goes there. 1.5 and 0.5. And I don't want to have a copy. So I deselect that checkbox. And now uh, my part should be in the middle of the other one here yeah, in the center. Nice. And now, now, uh, now I need to create a cut in which I remove part from the container. So for in order to do that, I can do this kind of Boolean operation. So cut, uh, intersect, fuse, and then uh, combine. But uh, I perform cut. Uh, the main object is a container. The tool object is, is this one. So I press OK, and now we have a cut here. So I name it cut, but this is now we know that it is actually hollow in the in the center. And in order to see that, I can have a clipping. So I press new absolute, and then the x is zero zero, and the x only one, and I need to move it here. So I press OK, and as you can see now, it is the cut, which is the container being, um, you know, being caught with the part as the tool. 
or part being removed from container. And uh, the next step is, uh, so I delete the clipping, apply and close. And the next step is to create a partition with the cut and a part, which is now the cut is actually the container. And so it is now the container and a part, but the, the hollow container. We should create a partition, which is here, and uh, it should be solid. So the resulting types should be solid and two objects selected. Press apply and close. And now we have partition one here. And uh, as you can see now, it has two objects embedded. What do we need to, you know, bring these objects back to, to life, to, to the entities, Salome entities. And in order to do that, we can explode the partition. So I press the explode, I apply the explode option on this partition. An important step here is the subshape type should be solid. So I press apply and close. And now you can see that I have two solids back to life out of the partition. And uh, they are uh, just uh, these two things that I had. So solid one is the part. I can also rename it back to part. And this one is the hollowed uh, container. So I can simply name it container. So I have the container and the part. Uh, and then, uh, you know, in order to refine the mesh on the interface, I can create also one uh, group on this uh, uh, object. So I create a group on top of it and it should be a 2D entity. So in this case, I select the faces and then I can also name it like the name doesn't matter, it is surface. And then I press select all and it selects all the surfaces here for me. And then uh, I could have also selected them one by one, but select all does, does it automatically for me. So I press apply and close. And now I have also a surface here. So this is just the surfaces. If I create the clipping again here, uh, you can see that it is just the surfaces of, of that, uh, you know, of the part. So later on in our measure, in next step, I will apply a, a refinement on, on this group. So now we are done with the geometry module. We go to mesh and we need to create a mesh on partition one, which is the entity that, gr that has grouped these two objects for us. So I create a mesh on it, on it. I select partition one and then mesh. The mesh type should be, sorry, it should be selected. Mesh type should be tetrahedral. Uh, it, it can be anything else, but this is, you know, for, for example, for free FM and Phoenix, this is a mesh type that is supported. And then I can select NetGen uh, 1D, 2D, 3D. I create a hypothesis parameter here. And these are, you know, some parameters that I can change. It doesn't matter at this moment. Uh, I can just put fineness to fine. But what matters here is uh, this one. The local sizes is where I can adjust uh, the sizes a little bit. So I press like on face, but before that I select surface here. And then on face, you can see the surface comes here. And now I can adjust the value for like the mesh size uh, here. So I can simply put like a small number, small enough number that I want. And then now uh, everything should be set. So this is the way that, uh, you know, we can apply mesh refining on the interface and a way that we can ask Salumi to respect the interface for us. So now I press OK and uh, press Apply and Close. And now the mesh is ready to be computed. So I right click on the mesh and press Compute. It's relatively a coarse mesh, so it shouldn't take that much time. The mesh refinement is only the, the, the time consuming part, but it is totally optional. You know, I just wanted to say that two things in this video, mesh refinement and also multi-material mesh. Mesh refinement is absolutely optional. You don't need to have it to, uh, to, to make this kind of, uh, you know, multi-material mesh. So now it's over and this is the mesh that I have. It's around 300,000 elements and uh, I close it. And then uh, it, in new versions of Salome, as I said, as I have mentioned several times before, the groups are automatically created for, for me. So now I should be able to have uh, to see like the parts and the container 
As you can see, this is the part. The mesh is refined on the interface of the part, and the container is also this one. They are both the same color, so I can change the color of the container, for example. So edit group, and then I change the color to something else, for example, this one. Apply, and now uh, let's create also clipping, so we can see what is inside. Clipping, and then a new one, absolute, and one, zero, zero. Apply, and yeah, this is the mesh that now I have. As you can see, two uh, materials, so part and the container, which are these groups, and also the mesh being refined on the interface that lies between these two regions. And then if I export this mesh, for example, I export it to a format that I can open in Gmesh. So I go to the desktop, I mesh one, it doesn't matter, save. And now I open uh, another terminal here, I go to desktop, where I have saved that, that file, and then I can open that file using Gmesh. So this is the, the file, as you can see, I have mesh visibility to 3D uh, element faces. And now if I go to visibility, you know, I have a lot of surfaces and curves here. I don't care about them because what matters a lot here is the volume, is two volumes that I have here. These two volumes are actually the ones that uh, we generated in Salumi. So now we have two volume regions. One is this one, and the other one is the smaller part in the center, in the middle of the container, which with two different labels. And if you have followed the previous videos for Phoenix and FreeFem, you know that you can jump into, you know, finite element, your finite element program that works based on, you know, Eulerian formulation and immediately use these two values in your code, in your programs to assign different material properties or treat these two regions as two different materials while they are in a single mesh. So yeah, uh, this is uh, what I wanted to say in this video. Later on, you will see that uh, this, uh, this technique has really cool applications for you know when we discuss uh, like uh, a couple of other projects like by degradation and corrosion you see that this this kind of uh, stuff can be quite useful in uh, in those kind of simulations in which you have like um, a model that has uh, different properties based on the uh, the region in the mesh so uh, i hope you uh, Enjoy this video and find it useful. See you in next videos. Bye.